It starts off with Omar Epps driving down the street with a bunch of his gangster friends. Weebae from The Wire is here. All these other randoms. This nigga Weebae is always playing somebody's henchman. Every movie he's in. He do got a henchman face though, Loki, right? And he's usually a good henchman. He's good to have on your team, bro. He's like, bah, 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 bah. How come God make a man strip before he beat him down? Take a man's dignity away and strip him down naked and humiliate him. He never forget that. You know what I'm saying? That's some psychological ill shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. They bought the slide on some ops together and it's a really fun time. That's when it cuts over to Omar Epps giving a lecture at the police academy. Turns out the whole time he's an undercover cop and he got this stupid ass wig oh on. These seven up ass dreads, vegan dreads, Kyle Barker dreads. He teaching all the cops how to handle themselves while undercover and he's explaining how tough the job is. All right, now check it out, Crimson Baby. Main man gonna hand you the honor of blasting this punk. Now he's skimming off the top, we can't have that. I mean, it's, it's a man's beef, not mine. It's not the way the game is played. <laughs> and your stupid ass is dead. Yeah, no, why are you even here, sir? There's no way you making it as an undercover cop out here. This nigga said, I refuse to slide on the ops. Can you believe it? Get real, Crimson Baby. Don't worry about it, man. We're gonna roll by his place of employment, uh, sort of incognito. You want me to jump out of this van and kill somebody? You don't shit me doing. Man, I hate that word cats, bro. Why are you calling niggas like cats? That's so lame. Who came up with that, old niggas? It's like a house cat? What does that mean? Don't call me no damn cat, you idiot. Anyway, they pull up on those aforementioned cats and Omar Epps starts busting wildly. He misses all the shots on purpose, but he gives a good enough performance and the gang still believes in him. After that pretty solid intro, we flash back to two years earlier and Omar Epps is just graduating from police school. He asks Stanley Tunchi to put him on some undercover gigs for whatever reason. Who would want to do that? This nigga loves snitching. I guess most cops probably love snitching. It's fine. What makes you think you'd be so good at undercover work? Well, my mother says I'm damn good at making anyone believe anything. You know? Oh, your mother. Good plays out here, man. They're gonna believe I need it. He gets the first assignment and he pretty trash at first. He gotta dress up like a junkie and get Nas to serve him. Nas is here for a cameo, by the way. Also, Pam Greer's in the movie. Barely, she barely in it. Got some shit? I don't know you, man. Take that shit down the block or something. Fuck, nigga. What's up? Fuck you, nigga. You don't know me. Chill out. Chill. Chill. Omar Epps stands his ground and they end up serving him like some dumbasses. You should have went with your first instinct, bro. Now look at you. I knew he was a fucking cop. All the cops are impressed and Omar Epps starts getting more and more missions now. We then cut over to the main villain of the movie. His name is God and he's one of the top drug dealers in Cincinnati. He's played by black all-star LL Cool J. Ladies Love Cool James. That's what it stands for, by the way. This nigga name is Ladies Love Cool James. What the fuck is that? Your first name is Ladies? All right, bro. They bust into some guy's house and beat him up or something because he owed them some money. Drug dealing movie. What's up with this, man? Fuck you think it's up? I'm saying, man. Are you real good with your tongue? Real good. I got nothing but love for y'all. Omar Epps is getting better at the undercover snitching or something. He's snitching on all these Hispanic niggas now and it's going pretty great so far. Woo, go college girl, go! Can't that they have a drink with us? Long as it been feel good for a while. Omar Epps gets Cuban B and his whole family locked up. 
Now he's feeling kind of bad about it. His other cop homies love this shit though, and now they're sending him after the biggest dealer in the whole city. Ladies love man. Cool James. You're going after God. Omar Epps ends up connecting with that blonde hair henchman from earlier. They don't show how really, they just kind of know each other already. It feels hella rushed. Honestly, I feel like this nigga don't even belong in a gang, right? You seem more like a Frank Ocean type nigga. Rocket power type nigga, rollerblading and shit everywhere. You old Arnez from one on one hit ass nigga. It's bad casting is what I'm trying to say. Jay Ree, got me out in the cold, man, what's up? Freezy T. Traffic bad in Akron or something? Hold a bag, T. If you let this bag go one more time, I'm gonna break your jaw. Fuck you, man. The blonde dude introduces Omar Epps to Cool James. He gotta pass these tryouts first though, before they can do business. They have this super manly, bald head boxing practice or whatever. Cool James like how Omar Epps don't back down and bald head. Now they agree to serve him like some dumbasses. You know a little bit more about boxing than you let on. Jay Reed from Akron. Later, they all go to Cool James' Thanksgiving festival in the hood. He's giving out money and turkeys and all that. All right, this nigga definitely a fake ass Nino Brown man from New Jack City. I was trying not to take it there, but that's what it is, low key. This time it's a light skinned criminal though, and a dark skinned cop. This is a reverse New Jack City. Yo, what's your name, nigga? Jay Reed. Smart mafia is paying my way. That's my man. Right? Grew up together in North. You know what I mean? It's a death. Now we're back at the drive-by scene from the beginning. Omar Epps misses all his shots like we saw before. The gang still likes him though and they ask Cool James if he can join the team. Cool James says yes, but he sticks him with a bunch of rejects, sticky fingers, and this other weird ass nigga. Why I gotta go through this with you every time, huh? What's up, girl? Come here, man. Oh! You don't fucking listen, man. <laughs> Nothing. Sticky Fingers ends up trying to rob Omar Epps. Omar Epps fights back though, and we get another pretty suspenseful action scene. This movie underrated, bro. What's up? You got any pain, y'all, too? Nah, I said we gotta prove ourselves first. That's just what we gonna do, prove ourselves. <laughs> Where the money at, man? Fuck that, I'll do this shit! Oh, Omar Epps goes to Stanley Tunchi and tells him about the robbery. They get into an argument and Tunchi takes him off the case. They put him up in this dirty ass cabin for witness protection or something. It's not all bad though. He winds up dating everybody's favorite mandatory hood movie girlfriend, Nia Long. Every hood movie, you gotta date Nia Long at some point. That's the rule. Nigga, it's only been three months. Is that long enough for his hair to grow like this? You went from completely bald to these little ass memory foam dreads. I hate this wig, bro. This is the worst part of the movie. Stop putting this shit on your head. This episode of Crimson Cinema is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Everything is crazy overpriced nowadays. If you're like me and you want to cut back on some of these streaming services, ExpressVPN can help. All these streaming services like Netflix actually have thousands of more shows on there. You just can't see them all because they give you different shows based on your country. With ExpressVPN, I can change my online location. ExpressVPN has over 90 countries to choose from, so every time I run out of stuff to watch, I just switch to another country. And on top of that, I can even use ExpressVPN to get discounts. If you buy Netflix from Argentina, it costs way less. It's crazy, right? It's so many ways to finesse it, bro. ExpressVPN is only $7 a month. It pays for itself in so many ways. And of course, your connection is secured and encrypted, so no one can see your online activity. So if you want to get some more shows and save some money, go to expressvpn.com slash prim. Use my link so you can get three extra months free. That's expressvpn.com slash prim. Shout out to them for sponsoring. Now let's get on with the video. So skipping past all the boring romance stuff, Omar Epps ends up getting his job back and he cuts off these newborn baby dreads. Then he goes back to the city to reunite with Cool James. Where you been, man? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, me, all right? so, 
Come on, baby. Where you been at, dog? Man. Whatever you need, you know I got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Oh, man. All right. See you, kid. You look good. Clean Thanks. as a chip. Look at you. <laughs> Why do you love Jay Reed so much? Get off his nuts, bro. He didn't even do anything. He had one failed drive-by attempt, then he got robbed and disappeared for three months. Like, what is that? You shouldn't even want him on your team. This friendship feels hella rushed, too. They could have used a few extra minutes on the friendship. Anyway, later that night, Omar Epps goes to some party and he's looking for his gang. He runs into Jermaine Dupri, of all people, and he a terrible actor. What is happening? Check the shit out I got in my pocket. All new gold, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? We can go chief one real quick, you know? Man, whatever, something. let's go. Come, Come on, dog. Jay, Jay. Yeah, you know that's Jay over there? Yeah, that's Jay. Light it up. Can't get no wind. You got it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Remember that new gold I was talking about in my pocket? It's your shit, bitch. Oh, 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 shit. Oh, 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 my friend, Melvin. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Look at that. Jermaine Dupri ends up sneaking Omar Epps and he want to take his chain. Okay, this little nigga out here is solo, trying to rob this very well-connected man. Do you want this chain that bad? This weak-ass Minecraft chain. All his homeboys in there, you ain't even being careful. They saw your ass leaving. You should have planned this out more. Anyway, everybody loved Jay Reed for some reason. He getting more respect from the gang. He legit didn't do anything. This nigga is not putting any work. He got robbed twice. He's trash, bro. Get rid of him. What are you thinking about? Okay, man, God wanna see you, man. Man, I'll come by tomorrow or something. Nah, you wanna see you today. Come on, man. Get <laughs> the fuck up, bitch. So Cool James calls everybody in for a meeting. He beats up his own henchman with the braids right here. Apparently Braids Yo has been trying to holler at Cool James, ladies. That's not cool. You can catch small hints of him trying to holler throughout the movie. This Thanksgiving scene in particular, I didn't even notice it the first time. That's some good attention to detail. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, yo, what's up with all this, dog? Yeah, I guess you see my man here bleeding all fucked up. And you see, damn, God, one foul nigga, right? You, all I do is tell her that you shut up, man. Give me a toaster. Like you Come on, man. Why you wilding out, man? Why I'm wilding out? You supposed to be my man? I am your man. And I'm no, proving, motherfucker. I'm sorry, man. I ah! Cool James takes this pool stick and shoves it in too deep, let's say that. Omar Epps is sitting here uncomfortable as fuck. Me too, bro. What kind of sus ass torture is this? Love it! Love it! Love it! But Cole James is getting more and more ruthless. Omar Epps is starting to forget he's a cop too and the line is blurred and he's in too deep, etc. And now that Brazio is out of the way, Omar Epps becomes the new second in command. That means he finally gets to meet with Cole James's plug and set up the final big sting operation. Are you a cop? What the fuck do you mean is he a cop? Motherfucker, don't insult me. All right, all right, all right. What are you, what are you doing? Put the gun down. Omar Epps has a standoff with Pam Greer. He low-key forgets he's a cop in the moment and he almost starts dumping. Again, it's a pretty good performance from Omar Epps. It's a shallow ass character now that I'm thinking about it, but it's a good performance for sure. I love Cool J too. They some all-stars. It's all a misunderstanding. <laughs> Would you do the honors, read Mr. Gittins' rights? I'm gonna play him the tape you made. He loves to hear his own voice. You ain't no cop. You ain't no cop, Jay Reed. You a sellout! Omar Epps saves the day and Cole James goes to jail for a long time. He rides off into the sunset with Nia Long and he grows them stupid dreads back again. You shouldn't have did that, bro. You ruined the movie now. I was having a good time. This is a very underrated hood crime movie. It doesn't quite live up to its full potential, but it's definitely entertaining the whole way through, except the Nia Long parts. LL Cool J does a good job as the bad guy. He a good bad guy. It was very menacing. I never thought LL Cool J could be scary at all. I see why ladies loved him. Cold James. 
They could have used a little bit more action. I'm surprised they didn't have a rival gang or anything like that pop up. That could have been interesting. Also, they barely used Pam Greer. I don't even know why the hell she's here. Bars. I think Omar Epps does a good job again. You can really feel when he's in too deep. Pause. I think he sold the Jay Reed persona really well. They claim this is based on a true story, but I couldn't find what the hell they were talking about. It's probably Cap. Please let me know in the comments if you know. That's it though. I'm done now. Shout out to all the Patreon homies. I love you. Be sure to follow me on Twitch for some quality homie time. Tune into my podcast, the BBC Club podcast. Catch me on No Jumper News. And that's it, I think. Thanks for watching me. I love you, no pause. All right, water. All right, now check it out, Crimson Baby.